first GOP presidential debate will be in August, and by then there could be as many as two full baseball lineups full of candidates. The question is, how to fairly stage such a crowded debate? People should be allowed to hear from the candidates before you start excluding them from debates. Even though it's a time-consuming process, um, it's a democracy. Everybody should have a fair chance. I agree with the proposal that to do maybe two rounds of debates with eight or ten candidates in each. And then maybe you see how they do in those debates, and then if the polling still stands with mm. them really high, maybe take the top, the top from each of the debates. When they're fighting among themselves, maybe they'll come out with the best one. Is it a solvable? Issue? I guess the question is, isn't there another solution to potentially solving the problem as opposed to just having a debate? Rackets. Vegas would love it. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, <laughs> that's why you're on the street talking to me. Wow, look at that picture. Look at that picture. So let's talk about that crowded Republican field and the rest of this week's political news. We're at the OTR Political Roundtable right now, joined by political analysts Mara Dolan and Pat Griffin. Good morning to you both. You just heard Governor Sununu, and he, he was talking about New Hampshire taking the first bite at this, this big field. What did you think of what the governor had to say? Well, it's huge. The moderates control the Republican Party in New Hampshire, but Trump is surging. He's appealing to conservatives, and Jeb Bush's failure to respond directly to Donald Trump's attacks on immigrants is hurting him. If Trump wins, it's a disaster for the GOP. Hurting? Pat? Well, Trump is a disaster for the GOP. He hurts the brand. He's not going to win. Um, I think Jeb Bush has responded appropriately. Uh, the first thing Jeb Bush said Fourth of July weekend was, hey, you're hurting our party, and I take offense to it. And by the way, knock off hitting on uh, Mexicans. I'm married to one. I mean, I think that was the first step. He continues to do that. Donald Trump is the president of July, and what someone needs to tell Mr. Trump is, you got to be the president of February. Um, let's switch to local politics. Attorney General Maura Healey finally showed her colors this past week on uh, telling Steve Wynn his traffic analysis is not reliable, and the state should do its own. This sort of delays Wynn's construction schedule that he's outlined at this point. Could this be the straw that breaks the casino's back, Pat? Well, I think Maura Healey has been pretty straightforward all along about her feelings about casinos. She's never been in advocate of, of really She claims this has nothing to do with it. Well, look, she lives in Charleston. I, I have a great deal of respect for Maura Healy. I, I like her. I think she's doing what she feels she needs to do. Um, here's the one problem. The state went through a process. The Gaming Commission was charged with a third, certain thing. They did that, and we had a statewide referendum. Casinos were approved vastly. Now the city of Boston and the state is sending a different signal to businesses who want to come here. Could her voice change anything, do you think, Maura? Absolutely. Absolutely. Traffic congestion is a huge issue, not just in Charleston, but in the whole state. She's right to ask the Transportation Secretary for an, an unbiased traffic study. The Baker administration go, should go along, and it should set a precedent for the administration. Mayor Walsh, in the meantime, is picking a fight with another casino mogul. His name happens to be Trump. Trump doesn't apologize to the Mexican community, then he will never be able to build a hotel in Boston. That's what Marty Walsh said. And then here's what he had to say when Trump demanded an apology on that. Donald Trump, you know, this back and forth. What, the latest was that he says you owe him an apology. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen, and, and that's all I'm going to say about it. That's not going to happen, and three that's seconds. all I'm Three seconds. I, I, to be fair, we don't know of any such plans, but, but Mara, why is Walsh punching back. Why, well, why is he playing? It's a lot like what Mayor Menino did to the president of Chick-fil-A. Remember, who yeah. was opposed to marriage equality? It was very popular. Marty Walsh is doing the right thing. It's a good move. Patrick. Uh, Marty Walsh is a smart dude. This is a great fight to him, for him to pick and a great opportunity. Look, I don't think Donald Trump builds a hotel in Boston. The last time he was in Boston, I think it was called Trump Air. It didn't work out so good. <laughs> Planned Parenthood now on the defense of Republicans in Congress threatening to investigate their use of fetal tissue from abortions. How do you predict this is going to play out, Pat? Well, I think that the video was, was, was disturbing. I don't care what your position is on that issue. I don't think it's a good issue for Republicans in Congress to push on right now because it reminds people of a very divisive par uh, position in the Republican Party. It's not good box office for a general election to be fighting over the issue of choice. Laura? I agree. I think the issue is going to end very quickly. Uh, what patients at Planned Parenthood are doing is, is donating tissue for medical purposes. So I think it's a good thing to do. You have to admit, though, listening to someone talk about that stuff while inhaling a salad at Panera was slightly distasteful. Which is why no one wants to talk about it, another reason why the issue will end. So we'll put a little dressing on the show in just a minute. So. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>